All right, so for this week's Reddit reply, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna kind of go through things a bit quicker and we're gonna try to cover a lot of them because there's a lot going on on Reddit now because we're not just talking about when will the next box be released or anything like that. So I'm gonna go kind of quick through them. I'm not gonna spend as much time as I usually do. So if there's something you want in more detail or have more questions, let me know. And I think I can actually just put shorts in the comments and I'll reply that way. We'll see, I don't know, leave me a comment, let me know and, and, we'll, and we'll do that. So let's go check them out. All right, so first one is rapid expansion. The more cards I get, the smaller my box seems to shrink. Yep. Uh, what is, in your own opinion, the best long-term storage solution for the ever-expanding rabbit hole that is this game? So I personally use uh, what's known as BCW boxes. They look like white shoe boxes with like a divider down the middle. If you watch my streams, uh, either here on YouTube or on Twitch, um, now and again, you'll see them on camera, but I can show them if you want me to. Just, just let me know. Uh, but that's what I use. I do want to get like a nicer storage system though, because like I use... I play so much of this game. I feel like I should get something a little bit nicer. I think that'd be cool. Um, I just haven't done it yet. So if anyone has any any ideas or suggestions for nicer content or um, nicer like storage to, to hold your content, like let me know. I'm, I'm, I'd be interested in that. So. All right, next one is the theory. The next three wave story arc will reflect the current MCU three phase story arc and then and star new Avengers Thunderbolts. Uh, and then they kind of... Um, clarified this they're talking about like the same heroes right so they go through all the story stuff and, and whatnot uh so they have american chavez would be possible new avengers heroes american chavez wong shang chi uh hawkeye the kate bishop version black panther the shuri version oh okoy maybe i'm saying that right <laughs> uh blade which they should absolutely do black knight mighty thor moon knight scarlet scarab Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Elsa Bloodstone, One Night Werewolf, and then Thunderbolts, U.S. Agent, Winter Soldier, Ghost, The Patriot, Black Widow, uh, Yelena version, uh, Taskmaster, Abomination, and then possible loose end heroes, Loki, Enchantress, Clea, <sighs> just thinking about Enchantress, uh, Clea, Scar, Blue Marvel, Mantis, Agatha Harkins. Um, so the thing is with that, that there's, there's definitely a solid possibility with a lot of these. And what I think what's interesting is the more the, the reason I really bring this up is because I know we have a lot of talks on um, chat and then Discord and all that fun stuff of like, well, what what heroes are they still gonna do? What's left, right? Because we think about Fantastic Four, we think about the Defenders, but we don't talk about anyone else past that. And it's actually a more decent options than I kind of remember or kind of put thought into, uh, which is cool to see, right? I mean, this is without without the Fantastic Four, without the Defenders, without any more Spider-Man stuff, I mean, you're looking at easily like two, three cycles of like solid content, right? I mean, some of these, maybe One Night Werewolf, like Elsa, they're probably not gonna like do those. I mean, they could, um, but it's just, it's nice to see like, you know, Moon Knight, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see that. Uh, Black Knight, absolutely. Um, uh, Black Panther, Shuri version, absolutely. Hawkeye, Shang-Chi, Wong, American Chavez, like all those I could like, for sure see uh winter soldiers kind of crazy doesn't have one yet but it kind of it's kind of cool to see right it's kind of cool to see so let me know uh what do you think what do you think is going to be coming down the future past fantastic four and defenders because i think everyone kind of agrees on that all right solo campaign magneto looking for tips playing gambit against magneto in campaign mode i beat magneto with a bunch of x-men as a standalone scenario but campaign mode is nuts that is true i made fairly short work of the first four scenarios to my pleasant surprise but uh, by this point i have hit a wall with all five future uh pass cards in the encounter deck so here's one of the things i'll point out like I know a lot of people struggle with Magneto campaign and you need to kind of focus on clearing out future pass cards. Like if you have that many in there, like you're going to have a bad time, right? Like this is, this campaign was kind of really interesting in the sense that it really punished you for not doing certain things early on, but rewards you for doing those things, right? Like not having the future pass cards in like really helps, like really helps. And again, Magneto is still tough, but he's a lot more manageable then. Uh, it was pretty interesting the way that they kind of did Magneto. So anyway, um, that would be my biggest thing is you kind of have to go through and you have to really get rid of those. And the, the more interesting thing is what you do as like your because you're allowed like right if you're an aggression you can have like a few justice or protection cards i forgot what that what that whole like mechanic was of building so you could do things with that and it's kind of you have to almost gear everything toward magneto most of my campaigns when i think about things i don't think about the next villain i think about the final villain right and, or the hardest one because sometimes it's not always the final one what what do i need to defeat that villain right so anyway that's just that's just what I would think about while going through a campaign, but really just future pass cards will like really mess you up. They are really tough.
All right, next one is Deadpool announcement speculation. Uh, everyone expected Deadpool announced on April 1st, myself included. That's true. I, I really thought he was going to. And as we got like within a month and people were like, oh, Deadpool will be in the box. And I've always said there's no way he would be in the box because he just sells himself. But then they thought the next big date announcement would be Cinco de Mayo because he loves chimichangas, which doesn't 100% make sense. Um, I, I kind of get what they're going for there, but the, uh, chimichangas have nothing really to do with yeah mexico so um anyway i don't think deadpool will really be on anything fun i still wonder if they're feeling some backlash from spider ham and april fools like it was not it was not really well received in the community which is sad because i like spider ham and i thought it was really fun what they did uh but it was not well received unfortunately and um i i think because of that they may they may be a little gun sh gun shy um i don't know if they actually are or not but that's like my weird gut feeling or maybe it's just because the calendars don't sync up with it anymore and last time they just saw an opportunity to do it because calendars sunk, uh, were able to sync up with it and then now they're just out of whack and they can't do it right it could be as simple as that too so um i don't i think we'll just get him on a normal random thursday at this point uh probably near the end i assume he'd be one of the last heroes announced is my guess probably the last one i would assume but maybe not is there a recommended order to Mutant Genesis and Mojo Mania? I just got both of these expansions. I want to dive into Mojo, but figured I would ask first. Is there any reason I couldn't play Mojo first? The two seem pretty independent. Yeah, you could do either one. Uh, you don't have to do one versus the other. Um, I would actually start with... Ugh. The, the weird thing is with Mutant Genesis, uh, Sabretooth is like the first villain. And he could be kind of tough if you don't really know what to expect. Uh, it, yeah, you either have to play in Rush or really like learn his mechanics and understand them i would almost skip to like wide awake or sentinels uh, not that they're like easy or anything but like i think they were more straightforward to grasp in my opinion but mojo mania like magog the first one wasn't too hard to grasp spiral could be rough um still fun this is very very fun but it can be a little rough and mojo can be a little rough so i don't know if there's really like a, a right order between just saying mutant genesis or mojo mania like if you're looking at like what would just be the easiest or the most straightforward? I would almost say like Sentinels and um, Project or Project Wide Awake and the yeah, Sentinels, I guess it would be, um, or whatever it is. Is that what it is? No, Sentinels is Project Wide Awake, right? Yeah, so Project Wide Awake is the Sentinel and then Master Mold, right, is the other one, Master Mold. So um, you could do that, right? They, they kind of play off each other pretty well and, and they're, they're pretty straightforward in my opinion. Um, so I would start with them and then kind of go to Magog after that, if you don't mind like mixing and matching. All right, has anyone got a situation like this? I've got a good amount of cards, all the mutant stuff, game out of the way, core set, sinister, all that fun stuff. Uh, all sleeved and storage box, vertical dividers. Sounds exactly like me, except for I don't use Divider Central. I use Tesseract games, but to each their own. One thing I don't have are the stands or trays for heroes and villains in play or acrylic counters or anything near those. Because I'm paying, excuse me, nearly double in shipping most of the time. This is the one thing that stinks about getting into like the acrylic side of the hobby is that shipping is really expensive. Um... I use buy the same token for the vast majority of my stuff now, and uh, they ship out of England, I believe, somewhere in England. But it's overseas, and it's not America. Uh, so I get it. Uh, shipping can be really expensive. So uh, I'm hoping to find places to have organized play uh, to get new players so that the game will be bigger here, and I can get more, or and I can have more to get games with instead of uh, true solo or two-handed. Thing is, uh, it is required to book the table in most stores, so would putting up a, on a post on discord or ask people to chip in when they come to play be a bit much they're just trying to get some advice on like basically like organizing play in a store so a few people ask like you know talking about organizing play and I, I think this is a really good idea because i think it's nice to try to get other people into this hobby this, this, again this i've said it before uh but but i'll say it again that i think this community that we have in in marvel champions right now is really strong i think it's a really great community right now uh, not that it wasn't before but i think like the community as a whole is very strong right it's a very very strong community it's a very good community together um so they they, they kind of talk about like what's your end goal with like cheaper ship cheaper shipping or whatever and uh they just want to you know get some people to kind of do group things right or, or different things like that not trying to start an actual business or anything um but it reason i kind of bring this up is because there was a poll that was done of what game brought you into the hobby curious what game uh brought everyone else in the tabletop hobby eventually leaned to marvel champions so for me it was another board game but and that's winning and to be fair at this point in time um i'm recording this the night before that you see this so at this point in time though what's crazy is 126 was another game in the hobby 
Uh, Magic the Gathering is 52. A different LCG is 46. Other was 28. 98 people voted, though, that Marvel Champions brought them into the hobby. Which, if you had, would have asked me if like, an LCG like Marvel Champions would bring people in the hobby, I'd be like, you're crazy. There's no way. Because this is... I thought this would be too much of an ask for people to get into the hobby. And I think it's fascinating that it is. So I... I I tie these two together because I think it's really cool to see people that are willing to put the energy and effort, put themselves out there and, and try to get their store to be able to do more of the stuff to get more people into this hobby. I, I think that's really cool. And it, it's at first when I saw that, that uh, post, I was like, Oh, there's no way like your new people are going to get into this game. Right? Like I, I just, I never thought there'd be that big of a demand of new people that would jump into this game through L or through Marvel champions. And it turns out the, uh, there is, there is a decent amount. Now, I mean, 98 at 350 votes in a sub that has, you know, 16,000 people is, is, I mean, it's not representative as a whole, but still, like, it's cool to see. It's, it's cool to see. So, quick question. If anyone watches this channel, did Marvel Champions get you into the hobby? I, I'm really curious about that. That would be kind of interesting to, to learn about everyone here. Who are your top five beginner-friendly heroes? If you're introducing the game to a new player who might not have experience with uh, CCGs or LCGs or whatever, or complex card games, what heroes do you often have them play? I'm thinking in terms of lower card complexity, intuitive play patterns, low rules overhead, uh, avoiding response interrupts, all that fun stuff. Who are your top five beginner? Um, I'll get to mine in a second. So <laughs> someone wrote Captain America, Spider-Man, War Machine, Captain Marvel, Black Panther. And I agree with most of this. I don't know if War Machine is up there for me because... Maybe a multiplayer because it's easier to like flip down, flip back up. But I feel like a lot for me, a lot of people that play this game when they when they first play, they want to hang out in hero side because like you want to be the hero, right? You don't you want to be Peter Parker, you want to be Spider Man, right? So I I think a lot of people want to stay in hero side and don't want to flip down as much. And War Machine has a lot of flipping mechanic to it. Um, the one thing I will say, um. And then people go into different things and whatever. But I, I will say that for me, I think Doctor Strange, as much as I, I gave him a hard time, I do think he's a really good introduction hero. And then that's why I don't like him so much is because I think he's very straightforward and very easy to grasp. Like run through the invocation deck. Now, to me, that's why I probably wouldn't introduce him to a new player. Uh, because for me, he gets really boring really quickly. So I don't want someone to be like stuck on strange, um, and being like, oh, I'm now bored of this because I'm just running the same five cards over and over. But that's just me. But I will say that I think in general, it's relatively easy to pilot Strange, right? The same can be said for Captain America. I think Spider-Man's pretty easy as long as you're not doing solo. I think Spider-Man's trickier on solo. Captain Marvel, I think, is is a lot of fun. And I think that's really cool. I think, like, the second or third game is where you take Black Panther in, right? Because Black Panther, to me, is a very good hero. And I think what makes it more fun is, like, when you understand the concept of, like, chaining all the upgrades together, right, through Wakanda Forever. Like, I think that's that's a really cool feeling. But if you have nothing to compare it against, you don't – I don't think you fully appreciate it. So a, a simple hero like Spider-Man or even Captain Marvel, I think it does a great job of showing, like, again, the simplicity of the game. And they're still very good heroes, but the simplicity of it. And then you get someone like Black Panther, and you're like, oh, this game could do a lot of cool, fun things. So that's that's what I would say uh, to that. All right. Um, any good streamers to watch that play Marvel Champions? I tried searching Twitch, but there doesn't seem to be any English streamers that play. <laughs> but but no seriously um so i i commented on this to let people know uh this was just what I, was off the top of my head at the time so i said just on twitch or streaming in general because on twitch there's marvel champions there's very few of us i think it's i think it's just nelson and i i don't i don't really know if there's anyone else that streams on twitch like let me know uh because i'm not 100 percent sure um but the sky gaming uh streams over on youtube i think i think the sky is really really good um i personally learn a lot from watching his streams or his vods because uh, i think he's a better player and deck builder than i am so i like to watch other people play a lot and i think that's what makes me better as a player and they have different play styles than i do which is really important too and that's one thing i'll mention um it, i you know i know a lot of people like like my channel and support and all that fun stuff um which i'm very appreciative but i do think you should watch other channels too because my play style is very different than like even nelson's play style only like him and i play together a lot and our play styles are very different um so anyway uh step in the portal does a does a really good job 
Um, and then uh, regular format, get up in game. I, I've talked about him. Uh, I've talked about Josh's channel a bunch on this one. You know, he's very, very good. And Night of the Living Card Gamer and Late Night Gaming are newer channels that are up and coming, I would say. Um, they started relatively recently. They have smaller followings. Um, you know, they're, they're going through the process of, you know, upgrading their stuff and making their streams better and better and better, or their videos, I'm sorry, better, better, and better. Um, but I think, I think they have a good grasp of the game and a good concept. And there's some stuff to learn there. And I think it's, it's pretty entertaining. So, um, you know, definitely give them give them some love and check them out. Um, I don't know. I, I know there's other people and I'm sure there's a lot of people I'm forgetting about. So I apologize. Um, you know, I, I don't mean to single people out. They just, this was top of mind. And what was really kind of humbling is like people like right away, like, you know, myself and Nelson and get up in game came here to say this. Dale is a good one. He doesn't make content anymore, but obviously like, the content's still up and it's very, very good stuff. Uh, very good stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I've, I've grown to like D20 we're working. He's fine. I've grown to like him. <laughs> but no, honestly, like, it's great. I appreciate it. So uh, they, they mentioned a few people, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's really humbling and really cool to be like on these lists now. So I, I, I really do appreciate it. It's really, really cool. Speaking of um, YouTube and podcasts and all that stuff, um, they want to see a non-solo version, right? Every channel on podcasts I've found seems to be people who play almost exclusively solo. Are there any that, you know, uh, multiplayer focus? Uh, a big one is step into the portal, right? For me... Uh, he right now is probably the best with multiplayer, I would say. Um, Tony Tails was really focused on multiplayer, but he's not really making content anymore. Um, but yeah, to me, he's, he's kind of the most obvious choice. There is, what's fascinating is if, if you are like out there and you're thinking about getting to content creation and you don't know what like space to be in, multiplayer Marvel Champions. Like there is a demand for it. There's a lot of people that have asked me to do more two-handed stuff uh because they want to see more multiplayer games and like i'm not great at two hands so i have a hard time doing it, a hard time justifying it. i still want to do it uh but there is like there is like a demand for that type of content out there and if you need help like getting started streaming or or you know making videos like let me know i think more more voices and more people in this content creation space for this game makes the whole space as a whole better, right? And if it makes the space better, it makes it better for everyone. It makes content creation better. Like it makes everything better. Um, so yeah, if, if you're ever interested um, in trying to start a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or whatever, like, and you don't know where to start, just, 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 just reach out to me. Uh, my email's in the, dis in the body or what is it? The about me of uh, YouTube, but also join the discord, um, join the discord and you can just chat with me on there. It's not a problem. And then there's a ton of other people there that will be more than happy to help you too. Okay. Difficulties with Ronin, uh, too long. Didn't read. You can skip all the background of the stuff. Is there a way to beat Ronin with rocket, uh, currently justice, but will change with group protection and Valkyrie aggression. Uh, they have everything that they produce so far. So I actually comments on this kind of asking about, it. I have to reply to this person, like actually reply. Uh, but you can do it. It's just hard. Like it's very, very hard, especially in, um, what is it? They're doing the campaign, right? If I remember correctly, uh, start this campaign. Yeah. So with the campaign, one of the things that is important to remember is that there was an errata on Ronin that you don't have to do like that side scheme card that like, I forgot. It's like an acceleration token and maybe an extra bad card. Maybe I don't even remember anymore. You actually don't have to do that stuff anymore. They eroded it out in 1.4, I think rules because they realized how insane it was. So you don't really have to do that anymore. I would say with with Rocket, you he he really shouldn't be justice in my opinion. Uh, Rocket should be focusing either on aggression or maybe leadership. And Valkyrie, no, Valkyrie should probably be aggression. Rocket should maybe be like leadership then, uh, which is weird for Rocket. But Groot should probably be justice. And I know this seems counterintuitive to most people, but Groot and justice is really good. I've done streams with him where he, he does some amazing stuff. I think Nelson's even done it too on Nelson all over, uh, where Groot uh, justice. So. You got to think a little bit out of the box. I still don't think Groot is that great in protection because you want to hold on to those counters, uh, his growth counters as much as humanly possible. And I think in protection, the way that they had him like originally kind of like built out was that, oh, like you'll just use the counters mostly as blocks. And then if you happen to get like a big hit or a big thwart with them. Okay, cool. But the fact that if you have 10 growth counters on Groot and you like save up for a big attack, I'm sure it's called I am Groot. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it seems like all of his cards are. You can then do massive amounts of damage uh, to Ronin in one swing, right? You can thwart a massive amount off. That's really, really helpful. That's why I think Rocket's almost better instead of Injustice in like a leadership then because he can kind of command the table and, and kind of hang out and, and just bring all those allies in for blockers and whatnot. Um, so, and then Valkyrie is just... 
aggression. I, I think Valkyrie aggression. You can do Valkyrie leadership. I think it's a little harder to pilot, and you gotta kind of know Valkyrie in and out and really know what to build for her. Uh, but Valkyrie aggression, I think, is a more natural uh, pick for her from multiplayer. Which mutants can you not live without? Um, they had theirs was so they're assuming that the four silhouettes are Angel, Psylocke, Deadpool, and X twenty three. Uh, there is assuming we get one last wave of X-Men related mutants, which it's basically confirmed for people that don't know um, that, that we will have one more. And I think there was a, from my understanding, there's a a very specific contract associated to this that they get like a shot at this and then they get to move back on to Marvel champion stuff or normal Avenger Marvel type stuff. Maybe not Avengers, but like other stuff besides uh, X-Men stuff. Doesn't mean they can't come back to it, but I think there will be a, a, a decent hiatus. So as far as uh, heroes that, or people that they can't live without, Iceman, Beast, Xavier, Nightcrawler, Mystique, Jubilee, Bishop, Magneto. So I don't necessarily have any that I can't live without. Like I'm, I'm not the biggest X Men fan uh, in general. Like I, I have nothing against it, but like I don't, I, I didn't grow up with it like a lot of people did. I will say I'm pretty sure we'll get Beast. I'd be shocked if we didn't. I'd be shocked if we did not get Nightcrawler, and we're almost guaranteed to get Jubilee. The Jubilee. Um, ally campaign card makes a, a comment about jubilee hero for, version coming into the game they wouldn't put that unless jubilee was going to be a hero in my opinion right like because again they they kind of understand that they have one shot at this and yes most likely they can do x-men down in the future but it's not known for sure and i don't think they would future proof it that way that's a very weird way to future proof it um so i think we are going to get jubilee and then bishop i know a lot of people are really excited for um I, I I thought we would have gotten him by now, but you know, next next cycle is, is definitely a possibility. I will say Xavier and Magneto, I don't see happening personally. I know a lot of people like think Xavier is absolutely going to happen. I don't think so. I think it's going to be like a Nick Fury that doesn't quite happen. Um, I don't know why. It's called a gut feeling. And Magneto, the same same thing. They do very few versions of heroes and villains. I think we're at one right with Nebula, and that's it. Uh, so it'd be interesting if they did the final villain as also a hero. Now, thematically, doesn't make sense, sure. Um, a lot of the speculation is Apocalypse will be the next thing, so Magneto could make sense with it. Maybe. Um, it'd be cool. Like, I want to play as Magneto. I think that'd be fun. I just, I have weird doubts about that. I, I think for me, Beast, Nightcrawler, Jubilee, Bishop make a lot of sense. Uh, Iceman, I know a lot of people love Iceman, so that kind of makes sense. Um, a bunch of people have... Uh, comments on it with with nightcrawler and whatever um what else did they write there's some interesting ones i thought um yeah there must haves or or magneto emma frost that's right emma frost was not a big one magic was a big one uh which was interesting um emma bobby mystique i don't even know half of these so um but yeah they a lot of people have a lot of different ones so it's kind of interesting that there's a lot left in the final cycle I'm, I'll be honest, I'm shocked that they're only doing six heroes for this cycle. I thought they would have done eight again. Um, so we'll see what the last cycle is. I assume they'll go back to eight, but I don't know. So let me know. Let me know in your comments what who you expect to see uh, in this next, this last cycle coming up. Looking back now, this seems like a good indicator of the next box team. X-Men S- X-Force. Yeah, so we made, we made a lot of comments about this on stream and I think in videos too, but I can't remember. Uh, that X Force was probably going to be the next one of the next cycles because it made the most sense with this. Um, it, it seemed almost weird that they wouldn't put X Force in at some point. Like, no one knew if it was going to be the second cycle or the third cycle, but it, it made the most sense that it'd be in there, which is why it's really important on the new release to pay attention to X Factor, right? There's a solid shot that X Factor becomes a bigger thing and the final cycle because of this, right? There's, there's a lot of kind of speculation around this now. Um, I'm almost thinking that's what it's going to be. I know a lot of people think it's going to be X-Men and maybe X-Force mixed together or something or just X-Men. I don't know. I, I would I would just keep an eye on that, right? Keep an eye on that. Is Strife finally going to be Hulk's moment to shine? So with Strife's mechanic pushing or punishing you, sorry, for having more cards in your hand, will Hulk actually be a strong pick having four cards instead of like most people have five or six, whatever? Uh, probably not, but it'd be cool that if Hulk was actually good. Um Hulk still is going to have his issues, right? And I know a lot of people are like, Hulk will never be good unless he's reworked. <sighs> good is such a subjective term, which is always annoying. Because, like, Hulk is good if you build him very specifically for a very specific hero. Or a villain, I'm sorry. He can be good, right? Is he is he overall, like, well-balanced good? Probably not in the way most people think. I still don't think he's as bad as most people think he is. Um, 
I, I, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot now for a Shield Justice Hulk. Like, this has come up from several different people, like either telling me in chat or messaging me privately or emailing me um, that, that I need to start trying this out because it's like a legit good build. Justice Hulk was always like a pretty decent build, but Shield version, I have to try that. I think that could be pretty interesting. So, anyway, I don't think this will be Strife's moment or his moment to shine against Strife. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. People just speculate because he's just like, you know, he's just bad or whatever. And they, they, they talk about fixing it uh, a lot. But I want to, I want to, the big issue, I guess, with him is that Strife seems to, even though he has a high attack, I think he has decent Thor options too, or an okay Thor option. And like threat seems like it can get pretty quickly out of control, if I remember correctly, on the villain. Um, and Hulk will have a hard time keeping up with that. That's going to be this big weakness. Like, I, I think Strife. We've only seen like what four or five cards, but I'm gonna guess he's gonna be a very balanced villain, right? He's gonna be very good at both things and what he does. And Hulk just can't handle that. He needs to face a villain that isn't great with like scheming on the main quest or or adding a lot of threat onto the main quest, right? So I probably not gonna be his moment to shine, but it could be fun. It could be interesting for sure. All right, multitasking while playing games. Uh, when you play Marvel Champions, do you listen to some music, podcast, watch TV, or do you completely concentrate on the game and avoid any distractions? So. The only time I actually have a very distract free game is when I do the Sunday morning ones. It's the only time I'm not really doing anything besides just kind of talking out loud to myself, which I guess is a distraction because I can be distracting. Uh, that's the only time it's like as close to non-distracting as possible. Most of the time it's with you all, right? Talking in chat. And so I'm, I'm distracted, but like I like the distraction. I think it's fun. And then if I'm playing for myself and I'm just kind of going through the motions or whatever or trying to like start working on a review because generally speaking, I try, I try to play a hero about 10 to 12 times before I review the hero or a scenario or whatever. Um, most of the time... Like the first couple times I'll play like nothing on like super focused, but that's because I'm like rereading cards over and over, but I don't really play the game right all the time. And then when I think I finally got the rules down, then I'll switch to like listening to music or podcasts or whatever. Cause I don't, not that I don't need to concentrate, but like I remember now what that rule is for whatever the card might be. Cause I just played it eight times in a row, you know? So I'm, I'm kind of all over that place on this. I don't know about anyone else, but I've also done like thematic music, like on uh playing a playlist from different movies and stuff. And that's really fun. I really enjoy it. I wish there was something I could do on stream without getting a copyright strike. Um, so, but anyway, I, I, I do do that as well. And let me know. What about you? Do you listen to stuff? Do you watch stuff? Do you, I know some people in my chat, like watch, watch me play as I, or as they play, which is kind of interesting and fun. I should probably do it sometime. I just, I just never have. All right. So this Reddit reply was a little bit different. It was a little uh, quicker and, and to the point though, it was still a pretty long video. Um, so let me know if you like the style. Do you want them longer? Do you want them shorter? Like, let me, let me know. Let me know that in the comments, however you want to do it. And if you want to watch kind of another version of a, like a medium size one, I guess. Um, I'll put it up right here. This is the Who Are They Reddit reply when we went through uh, talking about the next four X-Force heroes. And if you made it this far in the video, do me a huge favor, hit the like button, hit subscribe. All that stuff really helps the channel out. And if you're looking for people to stream on Twitch or YouTube, I do both. So definitely, definitely check out the live streams. I appreciate it. So see y'all next time.